Right now, Washington Mornings on the Mall. At AM 630. 707 on WMAL. Brian Neiman, Brian Wilson with you. ABC's Jonathan Carl will join us about a half hour from now. We'll talk to him about the Wisconsin recall election last night. It's a victory for Scott Walker. And we'll also give you a chance to talk about it coming up in the 8 o'clock hour. We'll also have David Limbaugh written a new book. We'll talk to him about Wisconsin as well and get yeah. into his book about uh, the President of the United States. We'll do that at 8.36 this morning. KT McFarland joins us now, Fox News National Security Analyst, host of FoxNews.com's DEFCON 3 show, which you can check out at 2 o'clock this afternoon on live.foxnews.com. Good morning, KT. Good morning. Well, the uh, drone attacks continue um, and uh, got another big name, uh, the number two for Al-Qaeda, uh, killed Al-Libi, who, uh, <laughs> by the way, is one of the guys who escaped from we had him captured in Afghanistan. Yeah, he was at Bagram Air Base. Yeah, in prison there. Um, so another uh, a big uh, get for most, the administration on this case. Most dangerous job in the in the world right now is being the number two of Al Qaeda. <laughs> Yeah, it, 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 they don't have key man insurance. Um, it, the thing about all the drone attacks, and I think they're great. You know, these are enemy combatants. We have every right to go after them. But they're sort of, as you unpack it, there are a couple of other things going on. You know, it's always the number two guy that gets killed. We keep killing a lot of Al Qaeda senior leadership uh, with these drone strikes. What it says, though, is how difficult it is for Al Qaeda to repopulate that top tier management. You know, normally. They've, if you're in any organization, you got the top guy, and if the top guy dies or retires, in this case, of course, Bin Laden dies, etc., you move the middle-level management guys up to the top jobs, and the middle-level management is what's been taken out by a lot of these drone strikes in the last year and two. Uh, so it's very difficult for them. They can get somebody to have the job and right. be designated number two, <laughs> but is he any good at it? Is the question. Well, I heard that. That's why you. So that's the good news. The bad news is because of this, you've seen a lot of Al Qaeda m- movement, and Al Qaeda has now respawned franchises in other places. I, I heard uh, some analysts say this morning that uh, this was a good get because number one, Al Libby was he was a warrior, he was on the battlefield before, right. and he's very articulate in Arabic and is you know kind of the face guy that they have and you know good at recruiting. So that in that aspect, they thought it was a, a pretty good get. Would you agree with that assessment? Yes, because he's the guy who's on all the um, the recruitment videos. He's on the internet. He's their rock star. So yes, it's a good get for that reason as well. But I think it, it, I have a second concern with drone strikes in general. Um, I th- again, I think it's great. Go after enemy combatants wherever they are. But if you look at the history of warfare, temporary technology always trumps. But it's only temporary mm-hmm. because eventually everybody else gets the technology. Whether it's the stirrup in the Middle Ages that allowed um, warriors on horseback to shoot behind them once they had the stirrup, whether it was the long bow that allowed the British to win over the French because they had more range, whether it's nuclear weapons, the United States is the predominant power because of our nuclear weapons capability. But eventually other countries get this capability. Mm-hmm. So I'm concerned about what happens next when other countries get drones. You know, are American CIA agents going to be assassinated you know, in Lebanon because somebody has a drone strike against them. I'm not saying we stop doing it, but it's something we should keep in mind. I tell you, if I was the number number three guy, I'd be nervous right now. And if they wanted to make me number two, no, I'll just be, no, I'll, I'll go I'll down go the line here. Yeah. Hey, listen, the, the Intelligence Committee is not happy about some of the reporting that's been done that connects the United States to cyber attacks against Iran. The fear from Dianne Feinstein, chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, is that, uh, well, if you, if you make that publicly known, and I think it probably was probably known, but if you make that out there and you, you confirm it, then you are making the United States more vulnerable because people are going to come after us. Uh, well, and John yeah, McCain, by the way... It's a picture of loose like, lips sink ships. Right. You know, this is the Bin Laden raid. All the operational details of the Bin Laden raid were out within a, within a week. You know, as former Secretary of, State, of Defense Bob Gates said... I thought we had agreed at that White House situation meeting that nobody was going to talk, and that all changed 24 hours later. It's the Bin Laden raid. It's the it's getting al Awlaki. It's now the cyber attacks. Um, if you talk too much about this stuff, several things happen. Um, and, and I think the most egregious example was when we talked about the the 
the under the latest underwear bomber where we said we had an agent on the inside and he figured whose agent was he wasn't even our agent you know we're leaking information presumably it's coming out of Washington and it may be politically motivated I think it probably is yeah. to make the president look tough on foreign policy but what is it doing what at what cost you know foreign intelligence agencies which we get a lot of our information from particularly about al qaeda particularly in places like yemen and and pakistan and others they're not going to want to cooperate with us anymore because they're going to think gee you know our agents are going to be blown if there's a recruit who's thinking of maybe i'm going to turn maybe i'm going to be an agent for the united states he's thinking oh i'm not going to do that look what happened to alafridi he's spending the rest of his life in jail and at the other end, you let the enemy know. You know, they read the front page of the New York Times too. Mm-hmm. And if they realize this is how intelligence operations go down or cyber attacks go down, then they they have a we- they have an ability to defend against that weapon. So I think you know, for if if we're going to have po- people take credit for things, that's mm-hmm. fine. People, politicians, always take credit for everything they have done and they haven't done, and they never take any blame. That sort of goes with the job description. But if at this point we're endangering national security. So somebody can get a couple more votes in an election. I, I, I just think that that's unacceptable. Well, John McCain believes it is politically motivated, and the FBI is investigating. Will they get anywhere? Who? What, what building does the FBI live in? You know, isn't that the Justice Department? Yes. <laughs> we have a lot of confidence that that's going to be a particularly. Um, unbiased investigation. I think it's time to call for a special prosecutor. Wow. We are hearing that uh, the it wasn't the embassy, but it was, um, I guess, a diplomatic office in Benghazi in Libya yeah. has been attacked by an IED. It doesn't look like there's any casualties. Well, but-, but what this does is, you know, we've talked about this before. A revolution is a three-act play. Act one, everybody gets rid of the dictator and they're happy. Act two, chaos ensues as somebody tries to reassert leadership. And act three, they get it together. The problem is with Libya, it's a long act two. Mm -hmm. And when we go in, the United States, whether it's George Bush, whether it's Barack Obama, whether it's a coalition of the willing, whether it's NATO, if you go in and topple the leadership, what happens? There's a power vacuum, and there's a particularly big power vacuum if the if the leader you've toppled is a dictator because he's controlled all elements of government. And what happens in, in a power vacuum? Bad guys rush in. So whether it's Afghanistan, whether it's Iraq, whether it's Libya, and now they're talking about doing it in Syria, understand that if you're going to topple a leader, you've got to stick around and nation build and does the united states want to get in the nation building business right. if not you shouldn't start toppling dictators because what you have is chaos and in chaos and in those dark and empty spaces who grows bad guys All right. our conversation can't end without noting that today is the 68th anniversary of d-day june 6 1944 and uh, normandy you know we talk about gutsy decisions gut-wrenching right. decisions that was a gutsy, gut-wrenching, and controversial decision. For and sure. you, you know what the guy who made the decision did before D-Day? He wrote a le- he wrote a memo or a re- press release. He did very few press releases, but he wrote a press release saying, "If it's a failure, it's my fault." Hmm. Now, how many times have American politicians done what Dwight Eisenhower did the night before D-Day? Amazing, Katie. Always good to have you on. Thanks very much. Great pleasure.